Welcome back, everyone, to another amazing episode of Hotel Talk. And today I have with us a character, to say the least, a very, very good family friend and someone dear to my heart, Mr. Dimi Mavropoulos. He is, a, I, I think, needs no introduction, but for those of you who may be listening from abroad or don't know him, I'm going to let him introduce himself and tell us about his love for cars, farming, nature, Cyprus, Carnival, and so much more. So, Dimi, welcome. Thank you so much for being on Hotel Good Talk. Good morning to everybody, and thanks for inviting me. Uh, I don't know where to start. I'm 73 years old, and I they tried to make a book, and the person who tried to make a book about my life gave up <laughs> and said we need eight books <laughs> and eight <laughs> volumes, so I cannot go really all the way because we need a day. And now we're going to try and sum so, it up in a anyway, few minutes. Anyway, good morning again. And um, I'm very happy. I just learned that you are doing this. And yeah. uh, I want to congratulate you. Thank you so and, much. And uh, thank you very much for inviting me. And I'm so excited that this is your first podcast experience. The very first. It's okay. amazing. Other radios, they invite me for a specific, uh, for mm -hmm. rallying, for this, for that. But... Uh, yeah. A, a general one, no. I love time. this. I Thank love you. this. It Thank will be you. like, this is your life, Thank or as you. much of it as we can. Yes. So let's start at the beginning. Um, we'll go back to the beginning and start with easy questions to answer. Where were you born? Who were your parents? And tell us a little bit about your childhood. Right. I was born in Limassol, and uh, my father is Greek from Egypt, and my mother is Greek from Izmir, but half Greek, half English. And my father's side was half Egyptian, half Cypriot. So I was lucky to be born in Limassol because I love Limassol and I think Limassol should be the capital of Cyprus. Thank you very much. And uh, I say that because Limassol provides everything everyone needs in life, from carnival, from your Tidu Kreshu, the, the wine festival, all the events are happening in Limassol, uh, and we should be the capital. And I'm saying to everybody, especially from Nicosia, that we are the capital. But I we think let in you... many activities we are, we are considered, yes, and a lot right. of people know, maybe not for the government The um, government things, should yeah. stay in Nicosia. I agree. Yeah. And the embassies, et cetera, et cetera. But, but it's so funny. For for those who aren't from Cyprus, um, I think I remember being, when I was at university, everybody laughing because, you know, anyone from Cyprus, there's always this internal war, guys, if you don't know. So it's like, oh, you're from Nicosia. We're better from Limassol. No, we're better. We're from That's right. Larnaca. No, ha, 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 yes, Paphos. Yes. And so we're always laughing. But especially the Limassolians, we're very, very proud of our... Yes. Lovely, lovely city. And, and I Limassol think has great. a bad side of it. All the Limassolians, they are the people who don't care a lot. They are the people who, uh, they do all the festivities and they enjoy them. And they are they are the crazy Cypriot. This is a reputation. You know, yes, yeah. reputation. But deep down, we are uh, more welcoming people than uh, the Limassolians than every other city in Cyprus. Sorry, I push Limassol. There we go, we love it. Limassol is the best, everyone. So you've heard it, heard it from the horse's mouth. So how did your parents end up in Cyprus then? I mean, with this mixed background. Okay, refugees mm -hmm. from the massacre of the Armenian massacre in Izmir. Mm -hmm. They brought them, the British government brought all the family, Bottomley family, which was an English family in Larnaca. And my father lost his parents and came to his uncle, Lanitis, because my grandmother is from Lanitis' family. Mm -hmm. Which is a, married, a very, very well-known family. Yes, he here married, uh, she married uh, a, a, a Mavropoulos from Egypt, who was a very, very rich guy. And when he lost her, he committed suicide. Oh. Yes. So my father was alone. So my his uncle brought him over, put him to the farms. Mm. No, sent him to American Academy. Mm -hmm. And that's where he met my mother. Aww. 
And that's me. Called. That's the product. That's here, the product. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love this. You're like me. It took four nations to build us. And then another country that we lived in. So that's what I say. We're the product of globalization. Yes, yes, so yes, the yes. cocktail children. Um, okay. So your parents, it was the love affair from young. They were living in Limassol. And then how did they end up farming? Okay. The uncle yes, from the, the Lanitis family Lanitis farm, yes. he, gave them the land or no, put them on no, the land? No, what no, happened? No, Lanitis uh, was the creator of the Lanitis farm and basically everything else. Yeah. And uh, he didn't have any children. So my father was his sister's child, but never gave anything. Mm. They built the farm together. Yeah. And at 40, my father left and he started his own mm. uh, by importing big tractors and started to be a contractor of cultivating land which was not easy to plow with the mules or horses or anything yeah, else. Yeah, traditional so farming methods. So he became methods. a contractor with two caterpillars, which are I have them. You still have them. I they are in the museum Yeah, working painted and my big picture of my father because those two cra two tractors made us. Yeah. So, and the land was already he your was father's buying, or he bought no, it? he was buying land all the time. Okay. And at that time, a contractor, uh, he was a contractor, so he would go to a farmer. He would take, he, the farmer couldn't pay him to make the land uh, uh, Arable, like, uh, yeah, yes. use, yeah, useful. so he was giving him half to do right. the other half, yeah, uh, be able to, to grow trees. Or it's the instance, age, it's the age old uh, principle, isn't it? I mean, right. modern contractors yes, do that exactly. now. I've got the land, you build it for me, yes, yes, and right. then we'll divide the flats the or whatever. The whole pisuri, yeah, was with the grapes, was all cultivated and given to these Pisurians uh, mm -hmm. farmers, uh, all the land, there was no way they couldn't do anything with mm. it. So he made, he, he even planted them, the Sultana grapes. Yeah, because it is marshland, isn't it? I mean, yes. majority, yes. yeah. Um, that's amazing. So he started off like that. And then of course, you guys are growing citrus as well. Yes, then my father bought other land. Mm -hmm. uh, and, we are what we are, we, you know. Mm -hmm. Now let's go back to my youth. Yes, please. I love going back to the beginning. I don't think that you have here in front of you somebody who was um, with the books all day, etc., etc. I want to tell you I was the black sheep of the family. <laughs> if they told me, don't drink Coca-Cola anymore, I would go and eat 10, and drink 10 Coca-Colas, you know. You're I the could, rebel. I was a, a rebel. And... Uh, schools, my father was fed up and my mother changing schools because they used to kick you out. Kick me out. <laughs> and they used to call me Trouble Dimi. They even I love me, it. Now that could they, be a book on its own. They even sent me to Nicosia at boarding school. And after one year, the monks there packed me and sent me back because for they you. found out what I was doing during the last year from the students during the summer, which they were staying ah. and being um, borders. Mm -hmm. So they spoke what I was doing during the week, during the yeah. whole year. So when I went back, they said, they no, no, said, no. Yeah, they kept the taxi there and they put me back and they sent me to my father. So. Okay, that's not a, a, a good example, but I'm telling you what Definitely I Definitely memorable. So my question now to you is, what made you like that? What, why were you a rebel? What was it that, was it an attention thing? No, was it, no. Did I your parents wanted, love it really always, and find it funny? Did you like being different? Like, what was <sighs> it then that? That's a good question. Uh, I was not... I, I had my own mind mm. and my own way of thinking. Mm -hmm. For instance, I used to see my mother buying from a greengrocer at that time, no supermarket or anything, tomatoes and potatoes. 
Next to the house, there was an acre of land. So what I did, I put potatoes, seeds, I put tomato seeds, and I used to sell it to my mother. Brilliant, an entrepreneur. And I used to count the tomatoes, and if she used one, I would come from school, measure, uh, uh, count the tomatoes, and say, Mama, you took two tomatoes <laughs> for our salad. And I used to have a paper, and at the end of the week, I was getting paid. I love this. Also, I love the entrepreneurial side. I was selling lemons to all the neighborhood. I had a basket, mm -hmm. like coffin we call them in Cyprus, on the bike, yeah. tied up, and I used to go around selling lemons, lemons, five for a shilling or five for a yeah. sixpence, you know, what it was then. And I was, and they used to tell me, why you didn't come yesterday? You know, yeah. the, the housewives. Yeah, that's so nice. So that shows you yeah. a little bit, you know. <laughs> and But I'm always interested in the why. Is it because you saw your dad with commerce, no, because you grew up with that? Very strict. Okay. For instance, uh, on the table, we couldn't start eating until he said the blessing. Yeah. And God bless God, God blessed us if we de we put more food on the table, on the plate, plate, and left it. Yeah. He would say to my mom, take it back, and tonight bring it out. Yeah. He didn't want waste, mm. obviously, because the, the, my mother and my father passed wars. Mm. So automatically, food was something with uh, value. Mm. And you don't waste it. And always says, put what you want, put twice, but not put, Yeah, you know. So we were very strict. We couldn't talk on the table. He was like a patriarch. Mm. You know, um, we were waiting for him to start. You know, that yeah. was. And we all had to drink the Murnelio, the fish um, cod, cod oil. Mm -hmm but not the one you buy from the pharmacist. The one the pharmacist used to bring a barrel, and when you open the, yeah. the bottle, the whole house used to smell fish. Mm. That's why I cannot eat fish. Mm. I don't eat fish in my life, because I remember... I think all your family are not fish eaters. And Nicolas doesn't, Nicolas eat, doesn't fish. eat fish. Yes. <laughs> the same thing, yeah. because Nicolas' father yeah. did exactly the same. Yeah. To with him. the cod, cod liver oil. Yeah. Anyway. Ah, interesting. I went to all the creme de la creme of Limassol. Mm. Didn't go to a, a national school, Rimotico. They went to the Lanitis, the Athenaidion, which was only girls. So, Costas Lanitis, Plato Lanitis, Marius Lanitis, Solomonidis, all the cream of Cyprus, the Galatariotis people. We were all in a school which was not a school. It was our anti-school. And we, we all had to have um, extra lessons in the evening to catch up where we were going for the gymnasium because we were not prepared there. Okay. We had calligraphy. Everyday calligraphy, you know, do you understand? So we were all with uh, extra afternoon yeah, lessons. Uh, lessons. Yeah. Anyway, so I it was went quite to a tough regime for for, for yeah. all our families. Which is which is probably why you wanted to yes then just be different and be yourself and kind of exactly. explode into uniqueness yes. afterwards. And from then, I had a love of. When I was five, I had a box, which I cut and made the garage. And that night, I would say good night to all my dinky toys or yeah. borgy toys, take them out, say good night, and put them back by kissing them. Aww. You know? Uh, do, do you yeah, understand? Five years yes, old. Yes, five yeah. years old. So always. And where did that come from? Was there someone who you met, or no, you saw an amazing no, car, or you? No, no, no. I was always attracted to um, the machinery. Okay. 
I would walk to school, and if there was an excavator making a plan, uh, making a, a piece of land for building a house, mm -hmm. I would stop there, don't go to school, and watch the the, the process, the process yeah. you know. Yeah, and, I the, was, and the machinery yes, and the machinery yeah, mechanisms. And, you know, and when I was eight, I was um, working at the farm, mm. cultivating our own. He was not allowing mm, us and my brother, me and my brother, because they we, when there was an uh, uh, when we had to go with the school to an excursion, we were not allowed to go with the buses. We would go Why to not? the farm. Why? To work. Because Ooh. he said it's a waste of time and I need. Mm. And I was. So six proper, proper old six school. Yeah. I was at the farm, couldn't mm. start the tractor because at the time the tractor was starting with a, yeah. a, a handle, wind up, yeah. a wind up handle. And somebody would start it and I was on the tractor with the crawler, not the tractor with uh, uh, tires mm. at the time. This had, yeah. And I loved it. Yeah. And that's how I loved machinery. So, okay, we're talking a bit about, I've got here, love for cars, and then, of course, your museum. But we'll go on to that because yes. then we, I don't want to jump too far forward. So you went to study in the UK? I went to study at the mm -hmm. London School of Economics. Mm -hmm. uh, I am so how did you get in LSC, having moved... So many different schools. I managed with just the passing mark. Okay. Don't think I got it. It was all C's and some D's. And you still but yeah, managed. I got in. Okay. Uh, don't forget it was easier mm -hmm. at the time because no computers, no anything. You could make an, uh, an ecstasy, what do you call it? A, yeah, an essay, yeah. And get somebody else to do it for you. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, like get it happens help. down. Yes, yeah. get some help on the side. And, oh, very nice, etc. And yes. also it just goes to show, that's what I used to always say when I was a student as well. I mean, what do you need? Like, it's great to be straight A's and everything else, if that's your priority. But that was my my point as well when I was younger. Like, I also wanted to have a life. I also wanted to see my friends. And so what did I need to get to the next stage? Yes. If it was a B, okay, great. I'll just get a B. And then I'll go out on Friday night yes. and see my friends. So have a bit of a balance. And I think that applies to life now. Yes. It's You can do all of one thing. That's right. But you can also do many things and then have more of a balance. So, yeah, I, I, lo I, I love I that. I was the lowest in gymnasium. Uh, 11.2 or something out of 20. But you yeah. still passed the, the entrance, passed yeah. So, and I'm sure you weren't you weren't the lowest because of no, your capability. I was the no, because well, of it, because of your brain. No, so, I didn't. Just because you didn't apply yourself yes, and you weren't bothered. Yes. So you went to LSC and you studied. I studied. I worked on a wimpy. In the evening. Okay, uh, like the yeah. hamburger joint. Yes. Oh, okay. It was wimpies then. Yeah, wimpy. There was I remember else. wimpy. Do you remember wimpy? Yeah, wimpy okay. was around in the nineties. It went no, on until 70, it still went 68, on. 68, it was Wimpy's the first. The, we no, went to Wimpy's. I'm sure to get it started, but then, yeah, it was around until. Yes. Then we're going to double check this after the podcast, but I remember Wimpy's. Yes. Yeah, as a child. And uh, there I was uh, a waitress, a mm -hmm. waiter, mm -hmm. with other waitresses, et cetera. And I made a team of mm -hmm. mine, mm -hmm. and we could make more money than what they were giving us. How? Um, okay. Ah. <laughs> I will tell you. I would go to you yeah. and you said, I want eggs and bacon uh, with sausage. Mm -hmm. So the chef will not put sausage and will not put bacon and will put a piece of cheese, let us say. I would bring it to the table and you would say, sorry, I didn't order that. Oh, I'm very sorry. Take it back. Nobody was throwing it. So the next guy who would come, I will push the bacon and the thing. And we used to sell without going through the till. The till. My goodness. <laughs> so, <laughs> we cheeky had, cheeky. Yes. Yes, See? it was look. It was something which was done. Yeah. 
you know. But okay, so again, now I go back to the yes, why. The why. Yes, yes. So okay, the commerce there. You were from a wealthy family. Yes, but my what, father but your was dad very was so strict. strict. So yes. he wasn't sending you money. No. He wasn't He yeah. was sending me the money no, the, the I needed. required. Yeah. And also, uh, when he first found out I have a car, he says, How did you buy a car? Hmm. You know how I did buy a car? I'm not ashamed to say it. I bought a toolbox mm -hmm. and during the evening I used to go and open the bonnets of the cars outside the street because the car park street, it was mm -hmm. then obvious. Every, uh, you know, you had a park outside the, 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 the house. So I would open the bonnet because at the time the bonnets used to open from the front. Mm. I would change, let us say, the wires. And in the morning, you would go to pick up your car to go to work mm -hmm. and it wouldn't start. So you knew I was the mechanic of the street, and you would say to me, Can you come and help me? Please, there is the keys. Can you look up, the, you know? And I started to you be the mechanic it. of the street. And then slowly, slowly, I, st I used to have servicing in the street. I used to be, and then and I, then I bought get a car. Paid and then, and yes, yeah. I, I bought a car. So actually, you've got a lot to thank your dad's strictness for, that it made you resourceful. Yes. yes. Resourceful, entrepreneurial. Did it make you resentful? Not at all. Not at all, huh? Not at all. I asked that with no, no judgment, no, no, just no, no, like no, let's no, talk no, about, no. yeah. That was his yeah. and his way of thinking, and that's it. I will tell you another mm. thing to show you how he was. He sent all the grandchildren of the family, he paid for their education abroad. Yeah. Except whoever goes to America. Oh. So you, Sylvie you, and Samantha yeah. went to BU. Yeah. He didn't pay daughters. one cent. Why? He didn't like to go and get educated in America because America was not a good education for Euro. Okay. It's a big market. Okay. You think that you, you know. That was and his principles, his beliefs. Stephanie, yeah. he paid Brighton University everything. Mm -hmm. Accommodation, everything. Nicholas, uh, Stamatis, everybody, mm -hmm. he paid. So he was a believer in education. He, he is, but mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say that what he believed, mm -hmm. you wouldn't change his mind. Yeah, yeah. So strictness was always there. Yeah. And I think it's that generation because yes. my, my my grandparents as well. I mean, they especially, oh, especially my German grandfather who, like your dad, and, went through a war, you know, was also a refugee from, from Germany and ended up in England. And, yeah, same thing. Yes. My mum grew up. If they if there was one even potato left on the plate, you would eat, in, you would eat it for dinner. And if you didn't eat it at dinner, you had it for breakfast. And this it would is, go on. This yeah. is, Until you finish that. Is, Whatever it was. Three days. Yeah. yeah. And if you wanted to be stubborn, you just didn't eat anything else. Yes. And, um, and yeah. And Okay. Our mother used to feed us afterwards. Ah. <laughs> you know. But it was the values. And also, I think there's a lot to be said for that now. Um, well, especially my one of my favorite topics that I'm known for in the hotel is sustainability. Yes. And then really reducing food waste and, you know, appreciating the energy and the resources that go into making every single thing yes. on our plate and not wasting. That's right. um, and there's a lot of talk about this now, but it's like we've had to, you know, re revert back. If we went back, you know, not that long, a few decades, exactly. this was the principles. Exactly. Like That's nothing, right. That's right. nothing was wasted. We weren't even allowed from my grandmother, you know, we, as little girls, we had our long hair, we'd brush our hair and that hair is on a, on a brush. And we'd never take that and put it in a bin. That had to go, open the windows, throw it outside. So the And the birds, we would watch them come and get it. And they would use it for their nest. For their nest, yes, of yeah. course. Yes. She was like, everything has, has, uh, has a, a purpose. Way, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So, um, yeah, it's really interesting. Okay, so you went, you studied, you got your degree. I got my degree. Yeah. And, then and your degree, sorry, was in? was uh, London School of Economics, no, but Economics. It was in the Economics, so you didn't economics. do engineering. I must, no, no? Okay. but I must tell you that the London School of Economics then was a left wing. 
And I remember okay. Costas Lanidis, yeah. my cousin, who was doing politics because his father wanted him to be yeah. involved, involved yeah. in that. And he became a Marxist. And he came and saw uh, my uncle and said uh, to my uncle, and he said one day, I don't want any, I am, uh, you know, yeah. one for all and all for one, <laughs> you know, yeah. the, the communist, uh, uh, you know, slogan. Yeah. And my, my aunt call, called me and said, look, please, I want to buy him a car. I want to buy him a good car. Can you buy it and do something to help me? Because he didn't even want the BMW. Yeah. He wanted to buy a second-hand car because of the school. Yeah, of that, know, of that of train that, of that, thought. That, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes. Interesting. So then what did you do after, after that? After that, I went, while I was at school, I must tell you, is uh, I had a friend who his father was growing watermelons in Greece. Okay. So I said I was going to say, not in England, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I, well, I said to him, tell him to send us a lorry. And we will sell it. So a lorry arrived. At that time, we didn't have telephones. I used my, com my telecommunications from the booth next to the house. You know. Telephone booth. Literally and the I telephone would, and they yes. were the, the, the red yes. with and the little windows. Yes, because I yeah. didn't want to hear the beep, 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 beep until I put the money. Yeah. I used to call, put the money, so the beep, beep, beep finished. Yeah, yeah. And the money was carrying on, so they don't know I'm calling from a, 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 a telephone, a telephone booth. Yeah. booth. Anyway, the lorry arrived. Amazing. And we did, I didn't know where to put watermelons. So I went uh, opposite... There was a big uh, park in Battersea Park, and there was a dry um, lake. So I said to the guy, I want to put some watermelons for two, three days in the lake. I will cover them, and I will sell them, and you have some money. So... I unloaded but all the who's things. Who's the guy? Like a, the a, guy, a, the a, garden, a garden, the, the yeah. head of the of the of the park. This is hilarious. So they must have thought, who is whole, this crazy separate the whole, guy? Imagine like your your swimming pool. Yeah. Full of watermelons. When I went to uh, Kensington, uh, uh, let uh, Van let like Hertz, like uh, Avis. Mm -hmm. We borrow, we got some money and we went and hired. And I went to all Campton Town, Kentish Town, all where the Greeks were. Yeah. And we sold them in a week. So I won't forget that we've made clear 200 pounds. But 200 pounds then was a lot of money. A lot, a lot of money. In 69, 70. Then I ordered another one. I ordered another one, and the man with the park said, look, I'm going to lose my job. Somebody is going to, yeah. he said, find another way. So I went and hired a small warehouse, warehouse and we brought eight of these lorries. His father was paid very well, and we made the money, but we were selling them on the back of the van all day. This is Hilarious. Okay. Oh my goodness. And Do you have a picture of that? I'd love to see a picture of you. Pictures were not very easy. I like know, now. in London with, <laughs> you know, in 1970 with yes. watermelons. Yes. And Brilliant. a lot of people used to stop and say, can we have half? Yeah. Of course, we used to cut half. Yeah. And charge them for the whole. Yeah. You know, I mean. Exactly. You, you remember, that. you don't remember that you used to buy watermelon peas already cut with a plastic film on it. Yeah. And you used to have, you have it fruit for after your lunch. Yeah. And we don't accept this in Cyprus. We have yeah. uh, half it, you know. Yeah. Anyway, that's how I started. And I started a small office importing stuff from Greece through our, my friend who his father was apricots. I used to get apricots. Mm. And my office was in the back of a kitchen of another office and 
there was a telephone with a booth inside the kitchen, so people would talk, uh, you know, and I was sitting like I'm sitting here, and I was spending my whole day there selling fruit to the markets everywhere. And what about your, your dad's fruits? I mean, your no, family. No, my dad's fruit was consigned yeah. to their, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To and the then some people chain. came to meet my father mm -hmm. and say every year they used to come and they said, your son is doing very well. We are taking fruit from your father, from your son. And my father said, my son? <laughs> my son is studying. <laughs> okay. So he says, no, Tim is your son, no? He gives us um, apricots from Greece. He does whatever. So then you have to book a telephone to talk abroad. So the, the, they ring me up in this telephone, and they said, uh, you will be at 8 o'clock being called from Cyprus. You had to book it, you know. So my father gets on and he says, why you don't tell me this? Why you don't? You know, and I said, I'm afraid because you think that everybody's a failure. So, so he says, why you don't ask me to send you some fruit of our fruit? That's what I, was I said, saying, yeah. And Papa, if you want to know, the fruit goes to Alfred Price. That's a big company. He sells it at so much. And I went and bought some of our fruit at more money than when you get paid. And what did he say? And he says, okay, I'm coming to London. So I didn't know he was coming to London to kill me. He was coming to London. So I went to, to pick congratulate him. You. I went to pick so. him with an old Cortina, which was my first car. And he says, is this your car? Yes. So I, we sat down at the Waldorf Hotel in London. And he says, right, we will start an office and our fruit will come to you direct, all of it, and you sell it. And then I set an office and slowly, slowly, I had an international office bringing from Mexico, bringing avocados from South Africa, uh, from Egypt, bringing um, the beans, the stringy beef, uh, yeah. stringy, stringy beans. Yeah. And uh, then I was buying from Lebanon for 21 days most of the big black cherries by air with MEA. Wow. Uh, and I was making, because for me, they are the best. Whoever says anything, for me, they are the best cherries, the black, mm -hmm. the big. Yeah. And I even went down there. And I've made them to smaller packages rather than five kilo. I've made two and a half kilo because it's easily, easily more easily sellable. Yeah. And uh, for 20 years, I had all Lebanon selling me the cherries. So how long did you do that business for? 30 years. 30 years. Yes. And then when the children started to grow up, the living in London is very, very nice, but not for having a family. Mm. And I persuaded Penny, and she agreed and got, and we came to Cyprus, all of us, despite the fact that we were not together. Mm -hmm. But there is no animosity. We are, you know, in very Yes, good this terms, is with your ex-wife, you know. yeah. So mm -hmm. they went to Follies, finished Follies, and now the grandchildren are going to Follies. Yeah. I know, we see them there. So, and uh, then I I was, uh, I had 19 people working in Covent Garden. I had my own offices. Um, shipping, I was chartering aircraft, I was chartering uh, ships. And then I opened an office in Sweden for the northern countries, uh, which was very, very difficult at the time. And... Uh, it lasted two years. The expenses were more than what, mm. you know. And your dad kept supplying you. Full. And I was selling everything. 
And he and must have been very proud of you. He was proud, but he wouldn't show it. He wouldn't say, or say it, I guess. Uh, yeah. he, I would tell him, Papa, we have to sell the grapes because they're already one week. We have to sell them because the grape will sell us. No, keep them. No, I order you, it's my grapes, leave them in the cold store. So what I used to do, I used to say, okay, I used to sell them. And then the prices would go, when we finished with the product, would go more down. And as he said, keep them because the market will go up. Baba said, the market will not go up because it's already brown, the grapes, mm. which they were not there anyway. Yeah, yeah. And then he says, when I sold them and I showed him the sales, he says, thank God you listened to me. Ah. <laughs> that was my father. Yeah. My father would sit here and say to you, it's nighttime outside. And at seven o'clock when it's time, he will tell you, let's go out to see that this is night. But, you yeah, know, that yeah. was, you know, the old. Yeah. And that's what makes yeah. everyone unique right. and different. And we love everyone. Well, many people at least yes. for being like that. So, um, you came back to Cyprus. You still obviously had your love for cars. Tell us a little bit about how that that little five year old who kissed his cars good night ended up, you know, that continued life lifelong fascination yes. for cars transpired into collecting driving. to driving first, rallies, first driving, collecting, and then opening a museum. Yes. So let's have this chapter. The museum was an aftermarket. Uh, because I've stopped being a professional driver. Okay. Uh, but I must say, my father always used to say, again, I call my father because he left something in our life. Always. Always. He was saying that if I didn't go for this rally this weekend, anywhere in Europe, or uh, the prices on Monday would have been better because you are not there, you know. Yeah. And when the television was saying anything, he used to switch off the television because he didn't want even my mother to see that I've won and I am, uh, you know, he, he didn't want. Mm. And always he said it's his fault because I, he, was, he pushed me to work on the tractors, cultivating, etc. So, yeah, so he, he blamed himself for yes. your love of, yes. of cars. Yes. So he didn't really approve of it. No. No. But... He, the people, when they found him and they said, oh, congratulations, Mr. Mavropoulos, your son won the championship. Oh, yes, thank you very much. Mm. And he would not, you know, yeah. you could tell, you know. Yeah. So how did you get into rallies? From 15 years old, I had a license, which it was not mine. I copied my sister's license. That's why my name is D I M I. Because I didn't want anybody to know who I am. Uh, uh, you mean Dimi as opposed to calling Dimi yourself Dimitrios? Dimitrios. Yeah. Yeah. And I was DM. Okay. And because Mary, my sister, her driving license, which I took the picture out, put a stamp like the other one, made a stamp from the government, yeah. I fall false yeah. and put it there and everybody thought that I was older. So I was winning and nobody realized that I'm 15 years You're old. only 15. And the English then were organizing all the rallies. Mm. So they there was no proof, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. And when you see somebody who is doing well and beats the old school and this and that, why they should you question be prior? Yes. Yeah. So, um, who is driving this car? Dimi, D and them. You know, instead of I could have put Achilles or I could have put yeah. Poseidon or somebody like that. No, I put DM. So, but where did you get the cars from? How did you get to know about it? I, I mean, how did it all happen? Car. Okay. And so, you at the time, you could use any car. Yes, it was yeah. not so, you know. Yeah. And my mother's car, it came first three times. And then and your mommy knew. Everybody knew. Yeah. You know, 
uh, but they didn't understand the law. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, not to. I started, and then I started getting drives. People could see that there is a talent, mm. and here I am. And then when having I went won to London, so many, how many I have you won? Oh, a lot. I have taken four hundred and eighty-two starts on rallies. Wow! In all my career, yeah. And there is records still not beaten with the today's cars. Mm. That's amazing. Because today's cars are completely different. Probably I couldn't drive a today car. Yeah. Because it's computerized. Yeah. It does a lot which we have to do ourselves. And in all of this and everything you've achieved, okay, we spoke about your father, but your mom, was she very My proud? My mom was very proud. And uh, she would go, somebody would tell her, go to that bridge, he will pass. And then all of a sudden I see my mother Aww. on the bridge alone Aww. to do this to Aww. me, you know. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, I can imagine. And you, you know, I presume you're very close with your mom as well. I was, yes. Yeah. yeah. And then God gave you lots of daughters. That's another, that's yeah. another <laughs> Another page. whole chapter now, Paige. <laughs> Let's talk about okay. being a father okay. of girls. Four girls. Of four lovely girls, all beautiful well, girls. There were a lot of problems at home. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest problems that the toilet seat had to be always up for me. Because all the girls yeah. wanted to sit down. Down, yeah. And you could never see on the line outside of the washing line any of my clothes it was all all, all <laughs> girly clothes <laughs> pinks you know, and frills exactly. and yeah but bows. Uh, having not have a son i don't know mm. but i must say to you and i must say to anybody that i would have liked to have a son like to have a son but a son to be like me, because if he was not following me, it would be terrible between me and him. You might have thought. You yes, mean, and yeah, uh, you see that. Angela, the first daughter I have, she loves cars, but she wants. She is more more artistic in the sense that she wants to be an actor. Mm -hmm. So she is in L in LA. And she waits to become the new Sophia Loren or <laughs> of this generation. Of, yes. That's interesting you say that and admit that. And, and um, the other three girls mm. are all uh, artistic. Yeah. Stephanie, she works for the BBC. Uh, what do you call her? Sa Samantha, she's in Paris working for David, for David Blaine, you know, the mm -hmm. magician. Uh, she married in Paris last year, and uh, Sylvie is has two dicks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, one clothes and yeah, yes. also creative. Yes. Yeah, and I and I think all your girls are close to you, and they yeah, all, we uh, are a very close family. Yeah. Also with Penny, my ex-wife, mm -hmm. you know, it's good relationship. You know, very yeah. good relation. Yeah, very good relation. Yeah, which is really important and and admirable because yes. that's what everybody wants. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I think everything happens for a reason. So she I was. think um, you had girls and not and not the son that maybe in this part of the world, a lot of people, well, definitely men sometimes won. I remember when I was having, I think both my girls, I was told, Embirazi. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Never mind when yes. I was telling people I was having a girl. Yes. Um, but I think that is changing and it's definitely something that I very much advocate for, equality and that girls, we can do everything that... You know, boys can do. We can drive the cars, and sure, we can sure, we can sure. fight with our dads, just like a son sure, would. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. So yeah, um, let's talk casino. Tell us a little bit about the casino, which is okay. You know, opening now you, in Limassol, in and a lot of people are really I've excited just, about. I've just heard today we are not opening in June. Okay, uh, and and your connection, because for people listening, okay. they won't know the connection, right. the land, the what has happened. Okay, yeah. you know, uh, the family, my father bought 
shares in the fasuri plantation. Mm -hmm. We have 41% of the fasuri plantation. And uh, Mr. Malisha Kolas of the NKS has 56. And the rest is small people who have two, three, ten, whatever. Yeah. So we are the second major uh, shareholders. And we went with all the companies to try and give them land, etc. And uh, we succeeded by not selling the land. Everybody else who came from abroad to start the casino or bid for the yeah, casino bed, license, yeah. they, everybody in Cyprus wanted to sell to them the land. Mm. So when we realized with Mr. Shakolas that, wait a minute, everybody's failing. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody wanted to sell and get out. Yeah. We decided to go in, give them the land, and get shares for what the land worth. Mm -hmm. This is it. Yeah. So from growers, from pickers, we became gamblers. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's a joke. Uh, I well, don't even well, know. At least the I don't even know what the blackjack is because it was not. That, I, yeah. I, 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 it's not. Not me. part of your culture. Yeah. Uh, your and nobody. Even my brother, yeah. we, we, we so all of a sudden we became part of a, a, an empire, which we... Yeah, yeah. it's, it's not it's necessarily funny, something actually. you would have fallen into. Yes, yeah. so we gave the land in exchange to... For shares. For shares, yeah. and I don't mind saying it. The, yeah. We have 25% mm. of all the Cyprus, the, for Melko, the, the, yeah. of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we didn't get any money. Yes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And um, so the casino is a large project opening up in Limassol. Everyone's very excited about this because it's been something on the agenda for decades. I think it's been a hot topic in Cyprus. Yes. Whether there should be a casino, whether there shouldn't. Cypriots, I would say, unfortunately, innately are quite prone to gambling, which has been something that the governments over the years have been worried about and many authorities, let's say, because, you know, we don't want the people here to lose all of their money or get addicted to things. But on the other hand, they travel abroad anyway. So there's a big emphasis now on responsible gambling with Melco and everything else. There's um, 500 rooms, is it? Yes, the hotel? 500 rooms. 500 room hotel. There's a lot of employment coming out of this. Conference facilities, huge casino. So tennis, this whole project is going to be... Tennis courts with the Mr. Uh, what do you call the... the uh, what do you call the... Bagladis. Bagladis, is, yeah. He's going to do a uh, tennis academy a, there. Yes. Um, so yeah, there's lots of things happening and it is opening this year. I mean, okay. every year it said, you know, this year, next Can year. Can I interrupt you? Please. Two and a half years delay. Okay. And we were supposed to open 12th. Then we went to 27th of May, of oh, June. And now we are 10th of July. Okay. And not all of it. Yeah. We have to start. Yeah. And uh, the other one will close the temporary. And we will go there on the 10th. Actually, this morning they phoned me and they said, and 3.20, I have a meeting at the... Uh, okay. Yeah. So watch this space, definitely. Yes, yeah, yes, for yes. the Limassol Casino. So um, I think one of the best ways to round up all of this, because, yeah, I mean, as, as you said at the beginning, we could go on for a whole day or days. But let's talk a bit about Carnival. You mentioned at the right. beginning you were the king of Carnival just a few years back. Um, let's tell the listeners who maybe are not used to thinking of Cyprus with Carnival or people who know that we have a Carnival here, which is second to Rio, um, let's tell them a bit about Carnival and what, what, what did it mean to you to be king of Carnival? Okay. My father and my mother and my elder sister, they, we were all involved with the Carnival. So when I was young, the, 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 uh, the problem was to buy the clothes, the cloth. 
then who is going to sow yeah. the thing? And then other people were arguing, no, we should be the Eskimos or we should be this. Because at that time, you couldn't buy them ready. Yeah, there's no now, CXC now and uh, Amazon. Now and it became very commercial. Uh, so automatically, when you see your family doing that, automatically, when you grow up, you are doing the same. Yeah. You know, and that's why... I have been making um, a lot of uh, floats and uh, slowly, slowly you don't buy or you get the appreciation from the mun municipality and the political, um, yeah. uh, what you call it, the committee for Limassol. So they choose every year somebody who has done things for the government. Yeah. Unfortunately, I was on the worst economic situation and they called me the person of the euro and the uh, problem with the banks so i was the king of the, uh, the downfall of the economy of cyprus the difficult year yes. when you became yeah but you know what you were was it um, CNN? CNN had a massive oh beautiful God, picture yes. remember of you it was the, and they said Second to Brazil Second was to Brazil. Limassol, Should we you know. Yeah, because we had that many floats and it's such a big deal here. And um, yes. and I think it's great. And it's something that really is part of our culture and it gets everyone That's together. Right. Yes. And it's a nice time of year because it's usually days, the weather's good. Farah, it's 10 days yeah. of craziness. Yeah. And you don't care. Yeah. You know, there is this 10 days of everybody doesn't care. Yeah. Well, you can go and sit in a normal restaurant and wear a wig and just have fun and nobody yes. cares. But also, you don't have to go to work. Yeah, well. Because I was you late last night. Hotel. You know, <laughs> yes, I know. But you understand. Because all yeah. they come to work and they are dead because they've yeah. been, uh, sit, you know. Before was even better. I don't want my staff listening to this. We have to yes, work even yes, more yes, then. I know. But, yeah. but before, we used to have the hotels giving us very good rates we do. We still yes. do. Yes. We have packages for yes. carnival and we for, include no, no. the dances. For the dances. And, yeah, yes. and the dances yes. and everything. It's a big thing. So we love it. So um, everyone, whoever's listening, make sure you come. It's usually in February. It's a 10 day, just amazing period. So I ask pretty much everyone this who comes on this podcast. If you have a favorite saying or mantra or could be slogan or could be piece of advice, um, or book that you loved reading, something that, okay. you know, would be we nice We didn't speak people. about the museum. Oh, yes. When Thank I stopped you. competing in the WRC and the, the high-speed yeah. rallies, I turned my passion to classic. Mm -hmm. And today I can say, not because I have nearly 300 classic cars. It's amazing. Uh, it's a beautiful in, museum. And not even... Turkey or Greece have the same amount. And mm. now I'm thinking, I'm in the process of doing four times bigger than what I have now because we don't have room. We've yeah. started to uh, hang like you hang the Christmas, yeah. uh, the Christmas ornaments. ornaments on the tree. That's how I, you know. So it's now it's becoming successful. Because yeah. the tourists know about it. It yeah. took a long time. To establish and it. there is no help from the government. Yeah. Even on the V8, on the ticket, I have to pay VAT. Yeah. And it's such an asset for the for, for, the, Lima, for, for, Lima for Cyprus, Cyprus. And for Cyprus. For Cyprus yes. Because it is the one I mean, and only. It's the one and only. It's something that's really interesting. I mean, I, I, I've spoken to you before because our, we have hotels in England and one of them's in Bewley. And there's the Beauty, Beauty. National Motor Museum um, there, which is just amazing. Yes. And um, I loved going to that as a child. I mean, we used to go like, you know, yes, some days, every, some weeks, every weekend. And um, and definitely every holiday. And it's so nice here as well. And I brought my kids to see your museum and they loved it. And um, yeah, it'd be lovely if you can expand yes. and offer more things and more interaction. Yes, yes, and, yes. Yeah. I am. Uh, oh, it's going to be, be a very big complex. Amazing. Oh, watch this space again. Yes. Great. I love it. Um, so where can people find out more about all this stuff? I mean, if they 
Is there a website? Yes, or, website yeah. is Cyprus okay. Motor Museum. Okay, perfect. Great. Okay, uh, so back to the saying or mantra or any advice for anyone listening. Enjoy life while you can. That's my motto, you know, within reason. Yeah, yeah. You know, but um, I will tell you one thing. After 55, uh, the years come quicker than before. That's okay. what I found. Yeah. That's why I'm not ashamed to say yeah. I'm 73 or hide my... I'm 73. I had a very, very nice life. But don't waste your time because after 50, 55, I'm saying it to all. Yeah. Um, enjoy it. Yeah. Enjoy it all the time. Absolutely. Make the most of it. Yes. So this is a crystal ball. Our staff and our team at St. Raphael all get to write a question. They don't know who's going to pick it. And it could be something very simple. It could be sometimes uh, more interesting and personal. And then you can see this bowl is here. I'll read it to you. Don't worry. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, You'll do see. it. All yes. right. If you can read the writing as well. What is the best thing about your job and why? There you go. So okay. what's the best thing about I love what you do? selling. I can sell, I think, ice cream to the Eskimos, as they say. Yeah. Uh, and why it's a satisfaction of achieving a sale. Yeah. That... An achievement. It's an achievement. Yeah, and a, and a recognizable, a tangible yes. achievement. Yes, to me, not to other people. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, they are all afraid when I go to sell something. I came to you, if you remember, to ask you to put the casino here. Yeah, yeah, well, the temporary one, yeah. The temporary one. And uh, you had no space. Yeah, we and, tried. Yes, yeah, we, tried. we couldn't do it. Yeah. And they said, ah, when I went back and they said, ah, oh, you failed. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. No, not no, at all. I failed yeah. for not, you know, yeah. persuading you to. Yeah. So, yes. and um, Well, no, it wasn't that at all. We, no, we, it wasn't. We, we were very much interested in doing it, but yes. we just couldn't, we couldn't manage no, there it. Was there, was, no, there was not enough know, if space. We, if we had a conference room that was 2,000 yes. square meters, yes. we would have yes. said, great, yes. take it. And it. But there were too many specs. It had to be on the entrance level. It had to be, you That's know, right. da, da, da. Yes, I remember yes, yes. we looked at it. Well, I tried. Yeah. You know. We tried. <laughs> exactly. Do you think that, I mean, I also love sales um, and marketing. Do you think that that's, that comes from, again, that need for approval, maybe that you didn't get from your parents? So it's like a tangible thing. Like, I achieved that and I did that on my own. Yes, you are correct. Yeah. It's the achievement satisfaction, yeah. which nobody can give you. You cannot yeah. buy it. Yeah. You, you have to it. work and do it. You yes, have to yes. go out and get it. And yeah. uh, another achievement is we have the casino. Yeah. That's a big, big achievement. And uh, we found a way yeah. to, to make not, it happen. Uh, to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, it's amazing. Thank you so much, Demi. I think we've done... So well, because there's just so much to cover here and it's not, you, you, you haven't just had I, one path. I, yes, exactly. You haven't had one path. It hasn't been like, oh, well, I started this and I did yes, this. Yes, 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 There's so many different aspects that make up you. And that's what I love. I love that about this podcast as well is really, really chatting to people that, you know, I know well, but still I, I, I learned different things. I was and... going to ask you to tell me what are the subjects. Yes, but, but no. I I knew you would say no, and I didn't want to embarrass you for saying no. <laughs> you know what? So, there, there are some I, people. I, I, I don't mind. There are some people that come on this podcast, and I say, okay, this is what I'm going to talk about, or I send them the questions that I potentially might ask. But those are people who I feel maybe are not so used to either public speaking or to interacting yes. or interviews. But with you, you're a people person. 
Uh, and I know that you're you also much. quite an open person. Yes, and you're I not am shy. open. I can say the black and white. Yeah. You and, know, you know, no. you'll call it as it is. So I was like, no, I really wanted it to be more nice. uh, more authentic and more genuine. So thank you, thank you for playing along. Thank you. And, and I, I uh, hope uh, your um, listeners are going to be enjoying what I'm we I'm sure. Spoke. I'm sure. Thank, thank you, Demi, and all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.